Hi guys and welcome to another tutorial here in Blender and in this one we're going to be looking at fluids again and um, I'm going to be showing you how to do a little bit of cleaning up of our um, fluid simulation because you'll find that sometimes after the simulation is run um, things need tidying up a little bit so what we're going to do first of all is quickly create a um, glass that we're going to flow this water into so I'm going to make that Oops, 16. Um, then we'll go to a front view. So we're just going to very quickly model a glass that we can use for our liquid to flow into. So scale that up there, scale it in the z axis. Okay, uh, tab into edit mode. Edge select, we're going to select all these top edges. Scale that so the glass is slightly flared. A little bit more. Okay. Drag those up slightly. Get the proportions about right. Okay, now we've done that. I'm going to delete this um, top face. We'll leave the bottom face in place. And Next, we're going to add a modifier to this. We'll tap out of edit mode, add a modifier, and it will be a solidify modifier. Just make the edges of our glass there. Okay, good to that. Now we'll apply this. We'll go into edit mode, we'll go to a front view, and I want to select this inside edge. I'm going to bring that up so our glass has a little bit of thickness in the bottom. And now we're going to add a new modifier, subdivision surface. Turn this up to three. You see that gives us a bit of a funny shape. However, we can get rid of that with our loop cuts. So we add a loop cut, we drag it down close to the bottom here. Another loop cut on the outside. And we'll do the same up at the top so that we don't have a sharp lip. Okay back out of wireframe mode. All right, and we'll turn on smooth shading. There's our glass. Okay, that'll do us. So this is going to be the object that our liquid is going to flow into. So we'll um, apply this subdivision surface modifier. And then we're going to add in a fluid simulation and this will be our obstacle and on volume we're going to turn to both I'll go to a front view and we're going to create a new object in here so we'll create a sphere this is going to be the object which is going to create our water stream which is going to flow into this glass so I want to create a bit of a splash as if you're pouring from a maybe this could be a Coca-Cola advert, and you're pouring from a from a Coca-Cola bottle into this into this glass. So, um, I'm going to put the glass at a little bit of an angle. So we're going to rotate this on the x axis, y axis, just a little bit, so it's tilted. There's our water here. So we'll turn it into a fluid, and it's going to be an outflow. Sorry, an inflow object. And we're going to give it a horizontal velocity of about 0 0.7. So um, this is the um, speed at which and the pressure at which the water is going to flow and in a particular direction. So if you leave all these at zero, the water will just flow straight downwards. If you give it some velocity like here, we've given it a velocity of 0.7 on the x-axis, the water is going to shoot out and gravity will pull it downwards. So you'll get an arc. As if it's being poured maybe out of this bottle. Um, 
So we just have to line that up, um, which is a little bit of guesswork. So what we'll do first of all is we'll create our domain object. So we need to scale this up so it can accommodate everything. Everything must sit inside of this. So now we've got our domain object. Um, we'll assign it as the domain object. Water, and I'm going to change our scale to about 0 0.3, probably, 0 0.3. Um, so this would be about 30 centimeters across in real world. Um, fluid particles generate, we'll just generate a small amount, 0 0.02. And I think we're probably good with all this. Fluid boundary, uh, just add two subdivisions there, and we'll increase the smoothing a little bit. Okay, uh, now we're done with this, let's hit bake. I'm not going to bake the whole thing, I just want to do a few frames just to make sure that our liquid is hitting the glass as we want it. So maybe I want it to hit the glass a little bit higher up, so I'm going to shift this up. And I'm going, whoops, yes, I'm going to shift that up and I'm going to change the velocity to 0 0.8. We'll up the velocity a little bit. Okay, let's try again. Let's see how our liquid looks. So it's going to hit the glass here and slosh down the glass like so. Yeah, that's about right. That's looking about what we want. And you can see the liquid is flowing now into the cup. And if we would leave this running, it would actually fill the cup completely. Now, we don't need um, a very, very long thing here. So we can change our end time probably to one second because we want to capture the, the beginning part. So we can also knock this down then to 24 frames because we're doing 24 frames a second. So that will make our simulation and render shorter when we don't have to go for so long. Um, I'm going to increase the generation here to so 0 0.03 so that we generate a little bit more particles and let's try baking again. There's our liquid there hidden in the glass. Now we don't have very many particles flying off of here, so I'm going to um, increase this generation speed to 0 0.5. See if we can get a few more particles and splashes being generated here. I'm going to increase the velocity again up to one. So that will give us a little bit more water pressure so it may help to create some more splashes now we've got a little bit coming over the top of the glass there i'm going to move this down away a little bit back into our simulation to bake so it's just a matter of manipulating our um, emitter object until we get it hitting the glass where we want it to and sloshing around like we want it to so this is looking a little bit better now okay I'll just wait for the simulation to finish 
Great. So we're coming to solid view. Now you can see that we have a little bit of problem here. The liquid is coming out of the glass. But other than that, it's looking okay, but it's just a little bit blocky. Um, if we were to go into our final view, you'll see it gets a little bit more um, smooth, but still not really perfect. If we put our glass back in, you'll see it's still coming through the edges of the glass there. So what we can do is increase our resolution of the final, and I'm going to actually increase that to 150. Now this will significantly increase your bake time and the amount of memory required. So make sure you have a computer that's um, capable of doing this, otherwise you'll end up crashing Blender. And I'm going to run this bake again. Um, so we will hit bake. Now it's going to take a little bit longer this time. So I'm just going to pause the video and we'll come back in a few minutes. So uh, that simulation has now run and you'll see that we now have more kind of splashes and particles. If I hide the glass, there, you'll see now we have a much more lifelike looking um, fluid. It takes a bit longer because of the, um, the number of subdivisions, but we've got something that looks pretty neat. Now, um, because of the number of particles that we're generating, you can see that we have quite a lot around here. So you might want to knock that down. So let's say 0 0.05. So we don't have so many particles being generated. And then you can bake that again and you'll see the difference. So I've rendered that out again and you'll see that now we have just a few less particles. It looks a little bit more realistic. Um, but we've got this funny shape going on with the edge there. So that's going to look a bit strange in our final render if we were rendering a glass. Um, and you can also see that poking out of the glass a little bit. So the next thing we're going to want to do is just tidy those up. So what we're going to want to do is select a frame that we like because that's going to be the final frame that we're going to be stuck with. So use the scrubber and, and, and we'll pick the, the frame that we like. It's kind of like that one. So once we've chosen the one that we want, we're going to apply our fluid simulation. Now we've applied that, we actually don't need our sphere object anymore. And what we have now is a mesh, which is editable. See, it's a very complicated mesh, but we have an editable mesh there. So we can change this now to our liquid, we'll name that, and the cylinder we will name our glass. The sphere we can leave hidden, we don't need it anymore. So now we're going to use our sculpting tools to clean up this liquid. So we'll select the liquid and we'll go into sculpt mode and you'll select the smoothing brush. And we'll just decrease the strength of it a little bit. Don't want it to be too strong. And we're just going to rub over this outside edge here and smooth our liquid so that it's not protruding out of our glass anymore. And it will smooth off the edges of this mesh as well and get rid of that geometrical pattern that was, that was there, which would not look very nice in our final render. So let's hide our glass again. So now you can see how we're smoothing off this so it looks more like a, an actual liquid. You're on the bottom as well, even though you won't really see it. But, um, so we don't want to do too much smoothing, otherwise it begins to eat away a little bit at the surface. So that's why I leave it on a, on a weak strength. I'd rather go over an area a couple of times at a weak strength than have it too strong and um, damage the surface a little bit too much. So Okay, so now I'm just going to go up in strength a little bit. Let's try and smooth out that there.
Right, and now if we put our glass back in, nothing is sticking out. And we have our particles, little bits of liquid flying away from there. I think it looks pretty cool. So that is how you clean up the um, mesh afterwards. Um, and if you want to remove some of these um, splashes maybe that, that we don't want, so you would go into edit mode, vertex select, and just grab the vertex, shift and L, um, control L, sorry, to select all of the vertices that are linked to that, X, and delete the vertices there. And that will, control L, X, and delete the vertices, and it will get rid of that. So if you've got any kind of excess bubbles that you um, don't want or particles flying off here that um, you don't like, control L, X, vertices, and they're gone. So you can clean up your um, final image before you do your final render in that way. So I hope that this helped you with um, the fluid dynamics here in Blender and how we can um, begin to clean up some of the problems that you may um, encounter um, so that you can get ready for your final render. So thanks for tuning in. I hope you find this useful and I'll see you next time.